It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Oh. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. Doubled up there. There'll be worthy winners. £1,700. Yay! And valiant losers. Also! <laughs> Will it be the high road to glory? Loving it, loving it, loving it. Or the slow road to disaster. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Drop dead gorgeous. Hello, Kent. We're in the Garden of England with auctioneer and road trip grandee James Braxton <laughs> and dealer extraordinaire Erita Marriott. Road trip! <laughs> I'm having time of my life. <laughs> I love what I do. I think I have the greatest job on the earth. This is the icing on the cake. Isn't yes, it, it is. This yes. is. This is dealing, but in classic cars. I mean, can it get any better than that? No, you can't. And with £200 each to spend, it's all to play for. One thing I can guarantee you immediately is you will probably win. <laughs> yes, it's been a while since our auctioneer from Sussex has taken the top spot, but that doesn't stop him. James is a road trip veteran and a real lover of the classics who can always sniff out a bargain. It's a large piece of brass. Look at that. So pass the brightest and weight test. Look at that. What a, a lo lovely solid gauge. He's up against Irita, a dealer from Derby, who's not afraid to buy with the heart. I know it's not to everybody's taste, but it is just so me. Today, Irita is behind the wheel of a 1968 Volvo 1800S, a four-cylinder sports car that some say is the prettiest Volvo ever made. Lovely. I need a straight road to, like, really test it. Really bomb it. But, yeah. You look yeah. very good in this. Oh, thanks. So do I'm you. very really good in it. This car makes you kind of feel a bit sexy and... <laughs> kind of feel to it. Blooming heck. Roger Moore, the great James Bond, drove this in that, in that fabulous programme called The Saint in the 1960s. James Bond. James Raxton. I don't. Ooh, Easy. shall I be your Easy. Bond girl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for that role. <laughs> James and Arita are embarking on a grand adventure across the south of England. Setting off from Kent, they'll be winding their way along the coast into Sussex and Hampshire before a final face-off in Devon. Very pretty, yeah. isn't it? Place to live. Oh, look, there's some duckies. Oh, there's some ducks. Hey, Bubba's. We're starting our jaunt in the village of Braisted, just near Chartwell, the former home of Sir Winston Churchill. Both of our antique hungry hands are hoping to snaffle a bargain at Courtyard Antiques, which sprawls across two buildings with a veritable smorgasbord of delights to tempt them. Now, where do you want to go first? Well, you're closer to that door, so you hop in there and I'll go in there. Good luck. Thank you. We'll see you later. James and Arita both have wallets bulging with pound notes, and they're eager to spend. That's a strong shape, nice Art Deco shape. And here's something in a similar vein as well over here. It says Victorian brass mirror, but I think it's later. I think it's sort of 1920s. We got some opalescent cameos here, and the surround is stylized. This is made of brass and it's laurel wreath. Look round at the back. I like this. This looks as though this has been done on an engineer's workbench. This looks like a, an old ebony mirror something that you might get on a dressing table would have had a handle and I can see where the handle has been sawn off and then uh, smoothed off there so the handle would have been down there it is 75 pounds if I could get this for 30 or 40 quid I can see a profit in it that's one contender now where's the Rita got to oh if I would have to describe myself in a piece of furniture, this would be it. We've got swags 
and flowers and the courting couples. It's just so romantic. This is what you would call a moon table. So it goes against the wall to kind of make the most of the space. And then, ta-da! You open it up and you would probably play games on it. Card games, chess. But at 700 pounds, it's a bit out of your budget, Irita. Oh, I could wax lyrical about it, but instead I have to keep going and keep going shopping. Time to move on. The clocks are ticking. What is James up to? Now, I spotted this earlier. I quite like this. It's got a silver collar here. It's been mounted in silver. Now, sometimes people do that to make things more special, or sometimes they do it to hide something. And it might be a crack or some problem here. Um, always check, you know, porcelain. Sometimes the eyes can lie, especially my eyes now. But just tap around. That sounds sound. That sounds sound. It has a very luxurious palette to it. Look at the amount of gold in it. It's a good jug, that. I'd love that jug. That's a great jug. It's 50 quid. If I could get it for under 30 pounds, I'd be in a winner and Arita would be looking worried, wouldn't she? Oh dear, stiffening up that. Steady on, old boy. Right. Time to speak with proprietor Tim. Ah, oh, Tim. James, how are you? Hey, great fun. It's been really lovely. Oh, thanks for saying so. And I found this, yeah. this rather fun Art Deco mirror. So that one, 75 on there. Yep, you could do 50 pounds on that one, James. And then this rather nice jug here, and that's got 50 on it. 40 pounds. Could you go any lower? I could do 38. I will definitely give you that, that's very kind. That's a combined total of £88, leaving him with £112 in his wallet. Thank you. I had really fun. Yeah. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Come again. And with that, James is on his way. Meanwhile, has Arita had any luck? Oh, when I saw that, I thought, oh, that looks so good. And it is good, but it isn't. It is good because it is an early dawn French glass lamp and it isn't good because it got a great crack all the way through it. These were made in south of France and in a place called Nancy. I think they are mainly known for their centerpieces with little butterflies and little frogs on because that is what you see the most of from, from this factory. If that was in perfect order, that would be 12, 1500 pounds. That isn't going to come cheap, whether it's cracked or not. I think I'd better find out how much it is. Tim? Tim's being kept on his toes today. Arita, ah. how are you getting on? I'm oh, very good. I had a great look around and I spotted your lamp. You can have that for £75. If that was not cracked, yeah. I could not afford it. £1,000. So I, Exactly. Yeah. So I kind of feel like I have to buy it for the 75 So let me give you some money. One, two, three, four, five. Here you go. Bye, Lamp. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Arita. Thanks, Tim. Great name, by the way. That leaves Arita with £125 to spend. James's next stop is just outside the market town of Chislehurst, where the green fields hide a secret. Deep beneath ground, a labyrinth of tunnels were once occupied by thousands of people. He's come to meet Jason Desport, manager of Chislehurst Caves, to find out why this dark and damp world became home to so many. Hello, Jason. How are you, James? Very good. It all oh, looks very splendid. Now, where are the caves? Because this looks like the opening of a public swimming pool, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Interesting enough, they built around them. So through this tunnel, you'll find 22 miles of intersecting passages of an ancient chalk mine. Wow. It played a very vital role in the Second World War. It, it did. This was the largest air raid shelter outside of London. Well, come and show me. Where, where, do, where do they all live, then? Right down here. In 1940, British civilians found themselves on the front line of World War II. The Blitz lasted for months, and in desperation to shield themselves from the deadly maelstrom on the surface, the British public fled underground. Jason, is this where they would have all come down each day? They would have. Um, this 
tunnel we're in now was built in 90, um, but the original tunnel's here when it was divided. So yeah. they would have had an entrance tunnel and an exit tunnel. I see. Um, and red light, green light. So yeah. if there was an air raid going on, uh, red light, yeah. if not, it would have stayed green. And they would have just continued down here until they got to the ticket office or to their bunk. Wow. Sanctuary and shelter. Yes, kept them nice and safe. Although known as caves, the tunnels are an entirely man-made network of chalk mines carved out over hundreds of years. Despite seeming an obvious choice for an air raid shelter, initially the government were against people sheltering deep underground, fearing civilians would refuse to come out. So members of the local community took it upon themselves to band together and create their own safe haven. When war broke out, the caverns were being used to grow mushrooms. And it was one of these would-be fungi farmers, owner James Gardner, who initially opened the caves to the public as an air raid shelter. This is what they abided by, was it? These rules? Yeah, these 17 rules of the cave. Why is this one here? Four days absence may involve lots of pitch. What's the thinking behind that? I mean, basically, if you were gone more than four days, especially during 1944 with the V1 rockets, it was presumed that you'd lost your life. Really? Yes. So the pitch would have become available? It would have became vacant really? and they would have reissued it, yes. Before long, the caves functioned like a subterranean city, developing facilities like a hospital and a chapel, eventually earning the nickname the Chiselhurst Hotel. <laughs> Thanks to the actions of James Gardner and local volunteers on the cave committee, thousands of lives were saved and families kept safe. Watch your head here. Thank and you. And there's a lovely paraffin lantern here on the table for you. Right, good. Well, they're nice and warm. Huh? They are. A little bit of light and a little bit of warmth goes good. a long way down in these caves. So here you go, James. Here are your bunks. This is how you slept every night that you were down here. OK. Pitch numbers at the top. Yep. Three tier, not comfortable, but safe. This particular area, we're 140 foot below the surface. The deepest point of the caves is 236 foot below the surface. Right. Jason, thank you very much indeed. It's a fascinating story. And I didn't know the scale of it, 15,000 people. Safety. Yeah. It really, really Safety did Safety and work. security. Yes, it did work. And I am so glad that you enjoyed it, that we've arranged for you to stay here for the next week. Do enjoy yourself, and yeah, we well, will see you in a week's time. Be sure not to turn the candles out. Oh, it's all right. You've got your lantern. Oh, oh, that's all right. I hope this paraffin lasts. I better keep it safe. <sighs> and while James is left in the dark, <laughs> where's Arita? I think anybody who starts the day by buying a very expensive broken lamp would say they have had an amazing start. <laughs> this is one bumpy ride. Let's hope that this is no reflection on our week ahead. <laughs> if she can make it there in one piece, Arita is heading to the town of Wallington and OAP Curiosities, where dealer Rob has amassed an Aladdin's cave of wonders for Irita to peruse. Oh, this is looking good. Need to take it all in, take my time. Be sensible. Do not buy broken lamps in here. Yes, that would be a good idea. Some might say a light bulb moment. <laughs> Now, let's see what we've got here. Oh dear. Stay strong, Arita. Lamp? No, no. Hey, are those? Spare teeth, anyone? Uh, oh. Oh, how cool are these? <gasps> Fantastic. I'm not sure what you would ever do with one, but it's pretty cool. I'll take your word for it. I love a good cabin of curiosities. You never know what you're going to spot. For example, let me get in there. This. Ooh, I love that. That looks dangerous, don't you think? This is mid-century. 
Norwegian. But it's not a piece of jewellery, is it? Basically, what it's been made for is for grabbing ice cubes and putting in your drink or grabbing sugar cubes and putting them in your cup of tea. And it has a beautiful blue enamel tip to it. I love it. Absolutely love it. What I don't love is the price tag. £75. What I have also seen next to it is this. A double-ended perfume bottle. You can see in the middle there's a darker patch right there and there's two sections and you would put your perfume inside, you would have had a little stopper, a glass stopper that matches the green um, in there to make sure that it doesn't come out. Unfortunately, that is missing. And the same on the other side. That one's missing too. And on top of that, I've just noticed there's quite a dent on there. I mean, the price does reflect it. £25. I know it's damaged, but you know what? I quite like it. I just like the story that it tells. So I'm going to grab my picker. My picker. I like it. Time to talk money. Rob. Hello, you all right? Yeah. Now, I've had a good look around and these are the two things that I have come up with. The combined ticket price is £100. Now, what magic could you do on the pair? Um, I could do £60 for you for the pair. Well, that's more than fair. I am in huggling mm, from surprised. that. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And there's £60 for you. Good luck. Thank you. See you later. Goodbye. That's £40 for the Norwegian grabbers and £20 for the Victorian scent bottle. So, at the end of an exhausting day, how are our intrepid pair feeling? Worn out like this old pair of boots dangling on the line? It's quite hard work thinking the whole time, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's actually more mentally draining yeah. than anything. You're going to be get, getting plenty of beauty sleep tonight, well, James. I tell you what, it, compared to you and I, I'm the one who needs the beauty sleep. Oh, come on. No, you do not. I do. Well, on that note, it's time for our antique hunting duo to put their feet up. Nighty night. It's the second day of our road trip through Kent and James Braxton is behind the wheel. What do you think of the car? I think it's really nice. It's very elegant, isn't it? Mm. It's a lovely driving position. You feel very reclined. You do, don't you? Ergonomically, instead of my weight being all on my bottom, I, th I think my, 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 my weight is spread not only from the buttocks to the uh, back of the thighs and then the back. Well, it's lovely. Right, enough about buttocks. How was your shopping yesterday? Are you happy? Oh, really excited. It was lovely to get back in an antique shop again. <laughs> Yesterday, James bought an Art Deco brass mirror and a 19th century silver collared ironstone jug. It's a good jug, that. I'd love that jug. That's a great jug. Leaving £112 burning a hole in his pocket. Meanwhile, Irita splurged two thirds of her £200 budget on three items a damn North Sea glass lamp, a glass scent bottle, and a Norwegian sugar or ice grabber. That looks dangerous, don't you think? Leaving her with just £65 to spend. You can't accumulate if you don't spend. No, no. What's the saying? Without risk, there is little reward. Yeah. There you go. And I'm going to risk it all. That's the spirit. Seize the day. After dropping Erita off, James has motored on to Headcorn, looking for bargains in the aptly named all sorts of Headcorn. James has £112 left in his wallet. What treasures can he unearth in here? Every home needs a mirror. 
Well, my home doesn't need a mirror because, uh, you know, the reflection is sometimes disturbing. You don't say. Generally, these are known as cushion-shaped mirrors because they've, they're, they're slightly cushion-shaped, so they sort of go out here. And it's nicely carved. The wood is oak. Suffered a bit of damage here, but damage sometimes is reassuring because it's, uh, it's, it's proof of age. It's got a nice back to it. Looks as though it's been there for some time. It's rather nice. It'll look rather handsome on the wall. It's got a price tag of 75. Now, if I get that cheaper, my smile would be broader. Time to see what shopkeeper Paul can do. Uh, Paul? Yes? Hi. I found something. Fabulous. I, I like this mirror. OK. It's got £75 on it. Yes. Do you think they might take 40 under 50 Um, I can certainly give the dealer a call and ask Would the question. You? Would you? Um, yes, well, and we can well, find you, out. If you're giving him a call, you might as well make it 40 then. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try. I'll try Give him a best. little room. I'll, I'll try my best for you and see what we can... Uh, that, that would be really kind. See what we can do. No Thank problem. you. Thank OK. You. It's one of those things, if you don't ask, you don't get, do you? It's a bit cheeky, I know that, but uh, you never know. Better to sell it before somebody kicks it over and breaks it. Sounds like a threat, James. Lordy. Get on the blower, Paul. James, yeah. I have the dealer on the phone regarding the mirror. She can't do 40, okay. but she could do 50. Paul, will you thank her very much? I'll take it at 50. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, Veronica. We have a deal there. Job done, then. £50 and James doesn't have to destroy any merchandise. Phew! <laughs> that leaves him with £62 in his wallet. And you'd better get back in the driving seat and mosey on, James. Mirror, signal, manoeuvre. That's it. Arita is just a few miles north in Maidstone. She's heading to the Hilton Hall Dance Academy to meet Zahida and some Kentish maidens. Or should that be Maids of Kent? To learn about belly dancing, an art form which first made its way to our shores in the early 60s. Stand by. This looks absolutely amazing. Hello, welcome. <laughs> this is belly dance. It's also known as raksharki in their origin countries. Where does it originate from? It's from Arabic countries. So uh, we would say Egypt as the main place, but we also have Lebanese dancers, Turkish dancers. The term belly dance comes from the French phrase danse du ventre, which translates as dance of the stomach, but is said to have been performed in Egypt since the time of the pharaohs. However, its origins are unclear. What is known is that in one form or another, belly dancing has been practiced in countries throughout the Middle East for millennia, forming an intrinsic part of many cultures. Today, it's still performed at social gatherings and celebrations, but it is very different to the westernized version popular worldwide. When did it come to Western countries? There was a particular dancer, but her name was Little Egypt in Chicago in one of the Universal exhibitions. And she was representing the Egypt's pavilion. So she was dancing with the belly bear. So it started that association. How long has belly dancing been popular in England? In UK? Uh, there was a, a very lively uh, night life around Arabic clubs and belly dance in London around the 60s, 70s. The belly dance scene now in the UK is more about amateur, more about community centres, more about gathering and having getting togethers and, and sharing good moments more mm. than performing in big theatres. I can actually see it as quite an empowering dance. It is actually, and I can tell you why. Everybody is welcome, no age limits below or top. You can dance, belly dance, whatever your body type is, your size. Now, the costumes is one thing that intrigues me because they are always so out there, so beautiful, yeah. all beaded and chained. Have you got any here that we could have a look at? Yeah, of course, let's go, have a look. Okay. The costume belly dancers are renowned for is called the bedla, made famous by sirens of the silver screen during Hollywood and Egyptian cinema's golden era. It consists of a bra, a skirt, bare midriff, veils and oodles of glitter and beads. Wowzers, look at that! 
Well, thank you very much. This is one of my performing costumes. It looks <laughs> fantastic. You're thank like you like a million bucks in that. Yeah, thank you very much. I think I refer to it as empowering. It is as, actually. Yes, it's like, I actually have my issues as well. I feel a little bit afraid or ashamed to show my belly. And that's why I'm wearing this mesh actually. But isn't it empowering that a person that has been ashamed her whole life because you wear fat, blah, 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 whatever name you want to put to that is actually marvelous dressing. And yeah, it is actually empowering. So the dance has helped you feel more confident. Definitely. Uh, time for a quick lesson, I think. Okay, so would you like to learn some steps, some movements? Yeah, do you like my outfit? I love it. Am yeah, I rocking amazing. it? Amazing. Okay, let's go to that one. The name of that movement is hip drop. Okay. okay, and basically what you do is just raise your hip and drop it. Drop, 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 that's it. Now relax and open your arms very wide and elegant and open your chest there. That's that hip! Every muscle in my stomach! <laughs> that is hard work! It is a workout, yes. It's a full, full on workout. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. <sighs> it was the best time ever. Thank you very much for your really good positive attitude. You are a good dancer. Oh, thank you, I'll take that. I'll go and show James Braxton my good moves. <laughs> right, thank you very much. See you later. Bye, see you. And while Irita sashays away, we're going to boogie on a few miles south to Goudhurst, where James has an appointment with Jackie at Goudhurst Antiques and Interiors. Armed with a fistful of pounds, 62 to be precise, he needs to make his final purchases before heading to auction. Right, well, that's right up my street. Bit of bamboo and rattan. Look at these. Very stylish pair. They'd look good. In, in a bedroom. Not often do I go into a shop and see something that I will want to buy immediately. The worrying thing is it hasn't got a price tag, so I'll have to ask Jackie. I love the stylized flowers, the whirls. They're rather sweet, aren't they? They're very interesting. Indeed. <laughs> in the meantime, Arita has arrived at Hearst Green for her final shop of the day. Planters, which offers a good range of antiques and furniture. But with just £65 to her name, she hasn't got a lot to spend. Oh, hello. I quite like the look of these. What I love about Japanese Satsuma wear, they're just so striking. I mean, look at all that gold. It's fantastic. Let's have a look, is there a mark? No, there's no mark on the bottom. Shame. Because a lot of uh, Satsuma wear is marked on the base with character marks in gold. And if you see that, it's usually worth a little bit more. Now, this one is much better quality than that. The detail is much greater. I like that. I prefer this one. Oh, and it has a mark on the base. Yeah, just like I said, it got character mark in gold, in gold letters. Now, this one is £45 and the other one is £30. Which one I would prefer? The more expensive one. Oh, I wish I would have had more money. Could have bought both of them. Let's leave Irita to ponder. Back in Goudhurst, has anything caught James's eye? This is rather interesting, fellow. All that glitters is gold. In this case, it isn't gold, though. Brass Indian baby's rattle. Brass? That looks silver gilt to me. So it's got incorporated whistle. And at the other end here, you often had a semi-precious stone, maybe coral, possibly jade, something like that. And it was known sometimes as a baby's rattle or teether. Priced at £32. That could be a good find. Time for a deal. Now, Jackie, I've got here a rather nice little rattle. Uh, that. I like this. It's got a 32 on it. But I also like... You've got a lovely pair of chairs down here. Now, I don't come to you with great riches. I have only got £62. 
OK. Would £62 pounds buy the pair of chairs and the rattle? I'll take your £62. Take me £62. You That's a last amount of money. That's very kind. That's £37 pounds for the pair of rattan chairs and £25 pounds for the child's rattle. A bargain. Oh, all done. That... That's good news. All spent up and all done. Meanwhile, let's see if the Rita's had any joy. Like the look of this. Got a top hat. Well, at least it looks like one. I think it's actually made in Murano on one of the Italian um, islands near Venice. So it's Murano glass and you can tell it is hand blown because it got the nice smooth pontal mark on the bottom that's been grounded off. And it got a great age. You can tell the wear just on the edge all the way around where it's been sliding on surfaces for years and years and years. Well, I like it. I think it's stylish. And this is only £25. And if it can be 20 quid, beggars can't be choosers. It's just going to have to be. Right then, time to see what dealer Anthony can do on the glass top hat and the Satsuma vases. She has her eye on the big one, remember? Do you think there's any chance he could do that for 40 instead of 45? Let, let's say he can do that for 40, yeah. Fantastic. Good. Well, that's that. And I also noticed he has this. That would be handy, yep. Looks a bit like a top hat, don't Indeed, you think? Indeed, it definitely suits you, <laughs> yes. That is priced at 25. Yep. What do you think would be his death on that? Um, to save troubling, let's say 20. That makes it 60. 60. Pounds. Yeah. Perfect. Good. There is your money, and I'm going to grab my bit and Thank head you. off. Thank you very much. Well, do come back again, perhaps with more money next time. <laughs> I will sure try. Good. Thank okay, you. OK, bye. Uh, with that done, Erita has made her final purchases for a combined £60. That leaves £5 in her pocket <laughs> and time to spare. James will be so jealous. Mm. Mm. To die for! Lovely. And after a long day antique hunting, next stop is dinner. What do they say? Uh, 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 breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. <laughs> um, so you, you, sh you should never eat, never eat anything that's going to be too heavy on the old town. But that, that's very easy to say. Very hard to resist, though, isn't it? Uh. Oh. <laughs> I found uh, reverse. Forward, James, <laughs> forward. I have found reverse. On that note, I think it's time to say shut eye. Rise and shine, it's auction time. Look at that, James. Oh, Isn't that beautiful? That is stunning. Now, that is a good place for an auction, isn't it? Right, OK, first one there. First one there gets the first lot. You can never work out this seat belt. Come on. Are you Hold on, wait, wait. Still. Slim 50-year-old emerging. Oh, iPad. <laughs> oh. Are you stuck? Do you need a hand? Oh, oh dear. Ow. <laughs> there we are. All ready. Nothing to see here. After starting their trip in Braisted and motoring through Kent, They've come south to the Romney Marsh. Meanwhile, their purchases have travelled north to Bourne End in Buckinghamshire to go under the hammer at Bourne End Auctions. With bidders waiting with bated breath online and on the phone, all presided over by auctioneer Hugo Lemon. Selling at 110. James blew the lot, spending all £200 on five lots. Does Hugo see anything special lurking in there? The rattle, unusual because it's 1807, a little bit earlier than usual, and it's in rather good condition, even though the coral end is missing. We could have some good surprises on that one today. Arita left herself five pounds change, spending 195 pounds on her five lots. Would you take a punt on anything, Hugo? The ice tongs, Norwegian, and designer pieces look good on a side table next to an ice bucket. Um, therefore, maybe 40 to 60 pounds, that sort of region. Right then, down to business. 
How do you feel about the auction? I'm always nervous about it. Yeah. Always, because you just never know. What about so, you? So, so. I, 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 I like the items I bought. Whether I bought them the right price or not, we're about to find out, well, aren't we? Go on then. First up, James's rattan chairs. Fifty pounds for them. Fifty. This is uncharted territory. Really? Oh my god, that's fantastic! I'm crazy. I'm going to sell then at one hundred and ten pounds. Last chance at one ten. Good show, eh? Ooh, that's very good. Thirty-seven pounds. Sort of vaguely embarrassing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're not used to making money, are you? No, I'm not. Next, let's see if Irita's lamp will light up the auction. 50 I'm bid, thank you, and five I'll take it. 50 pounds I'm bid, and five anywhere. Come on. And 50 pounds I'm bid, and five. Bit more. Nice Come on. Go on. Keep going. 55 now I'm bid, and 60. 60 I'm bid, thank you, and five. And five, and 70. 70 I'm bid, thank you, and five. And five, and Yeah, bro, give him! 80, 80. <laughs> 80 I'm bid, thank you, and five. <laughs> At eighty-five pounds, and at eighty-five pounds, and I will. Come on! Come on! Last chance. Well, a profit is a profit. I wish I could have found a perfect one for that money. I know. Next leg. Next leg. Next leg. <laughs> no one's thrown their toys out of the pram yet. James's rattle is next. Eighty on bid. Thank you. And five. And five. Oh my God! Nine, that's fantastic. One hundred. 100. 120, 130, 140, 160. Jamie, what's happened to me? 180, 200. With interest from overseas, the rattle is already at £200 and still climbing. 340, 360. Wow. 360 pounds and on the phone at 360. 360, come on. Wow. At 360, then I'm selling then at 360. Come on, one more bid. Oh. 380, I'm bid, thank 380. you. 400. <laughs> At £400, and are you sure? You're all out then. On the phone then at 400 Well done, James. That item is on its way to Belgium. £400, James. That is amazing. I mean, it was a spectacular thing. Mm. Well, that leaves Erita with a mountain to climb. Her Norwegian grabbers are up next. Don't be at fifty pounds for them. Fifty would be nice. Fifty, I'm bid. Thank yes. you. And well five. done. Profit. And five and sixty and five yeah. and seventy and five. That's and fantastic. 80. Wow. Ninety, I'm bid now. And five and five and five. One hundred. It's that magic combination, silver and the enamel, room. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. One hundred, I'm bid. Thank you. One ten. One ten. At one hundred and ten pounds in the room at one ten. Last chance then at 110. I'm selling then at 110. That's a great start to the fight back. Very happy. 110 pounds. That's, That's a very great good. result, isn't very it? Very good. Yeah. Can he stretch his lead with the mirror? 50 pounds, anyone? Oh. 50, I'm bid. Thank you. 50. And 5 and 5 and 60. 50. You're 60 in. 5 and 5 and 70, I'm bid. At 70 pounds on commission wow. and 5. 75 now. Really buoyant right now. Pounds, I'm bid and 80 anywhere. 80 I'm bid, thank you. New place, 85 now and 90. Still cheap for a large mirror like that. At 85 pounds I'm bid. At 85, 85 and 90. 85. I'm happy with that. Now, 100. Had a bit of deterioration on the mirror. Yeah, yeah but that gives a character. 100, bid, thank you. 100, 110. 100, 110. 110. At 110 pounds at 110. All done at 110. Selling at 110. Well, another healthy profit for Mr. Braxton. You do fantastic. I want. It's, uh, you know, unusual, but there we are. <laughs> now, will the scent bottle deliver the sweet smell of success? 30, I'm bid straight in there at 30 and 2. What? 30 and bid, 32, 35 now, new places. Oh, I like you. Keep going. 40, I'm bid now at 40 and 2. At 40 pounds, I'm bid and 2, I'll take at 40. 40. Last chance at 40. I'll take you double my money. All done at 40. A respectable return on that. Happy? Yeah. Happy, Bunny. I would be happy. No resting on your laurels now, James. It's the Art Deco mirror. 
37, 37, 40, 40, 42, 42, 45, 45, I'm bid now. Come on, I want to get it Come on. Oh, God. Go on, you can do it, man. You'll break even. 47, I'll take it. 45 pounds, 47 anywhere. At Come on. Are you all done at 45 pounds? Oh, well, the hot streak had to end somewhere. It's the it first was... loss. I'd be smiling if I was here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I would have bought it for 50 pounds. Yeah, well, there we are. Will the Satsuma vase charm the bidders under the hammer next? I'm um, looking for 80 to start. 80? That would wow. be nice. 80 pounds, anyone? 50 to get away. Oh. 50 pounds, <laughs> 50 I'm bid, thank you, and five, I'll take it. I was going to say that was... Um, uh, 55 now I have, and 60, 60, 60, I'm bid, thank you, and five. And five. It's profit. 70. Could five, I double my money? 80, 80, I'm bid now, and five, and five. Do you money? 90, I'm bid, and five. Well done. I'm going to sell then at 90 pounds, all done then at 90. Excellent work. Steady profits for Irita so far. I feel like... <laughs> feel like dancing. Moving swiftly on, will James waltz away with the victory on his final lot? 30 pounds, anyone? 30 straight in at 30, 30 and 2. At 30 pounds, I'm bidding. 2, I'll take at 30 pounds, I'm bidding. 30, 30, 30, 32, 32, 35. Oh, 35, I'm now bidding. Come on, you're nearly there. I'll take. Come on. 37, thank you. Take the 8. 40, Go on. 40, I'm bidding. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Well 42, done! 45. 47. 50, I'm bid, thank you, and five. I'm going to sell then at 50 pounds. Are you all done at 50? 12 pounds profit rounds off a very good day for Mr Braxton. Put that hammer down! Well done, well 50 done. 50 pounds! What profit can you pull out of this hat, then? 20 then to start. 20, I'm bid, thank you, and two. 22, 22, 22 25, 27, 27, I'm bid, 30 anywhere. And 30, 30, I'm bid, thank you, and two. 32, 35, 35, 37, 37, and 40, I'll take at 37 pounds, I'm bid, and 40 anywhere. At 37 pounds, I'm bid, and 40 anywhere. At 37 then. At 37 pounds, and are you all done at 37? Is that it? 17 pounds profit, but I think it's hats off to James, don't you? That's well, very good. What a successful auction. That's been fantastic. Really good. What are you going to do? Are you going to spend it all now? Well, I'll put it this way, Arita. I'm not going to be buying 20 or 30 pound items. I've got the opportunity now to spend hundreds. Great. Arita made a profit on five out of five lots and after auction costs has banked 301 pounds and 84 pence. Wow. But the day truly belongs to James, who, despite making a loss on one of his lots, has filled his piggy to a massive 586 pounds and 30 pence. Quite amazing. Come on, James, take me to some shops, will you? Oh, 